Hi everyone and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Rosana. I just finished cooking some beans because we're gonna be making refried beans. These are creamy, delicious, and super easy to make. So let's go over how to cook the beans. For this recipe, we're gonna need one pound of pinto beans. Go ahead and sort through them to remove any debris, stones, broken beans, whatever you find in there that does not belong. For the most part, here in the United States, they're pretty clean, but you may want to do it just in case because in Mexico, it was a must. We would even find pieces of dirt and maybe a couple of bugs. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, I have something to add there. I don't know if you know, but I'm not an agricultural expert, but I remember why they used to have pieces of dirt, like little crumbs, you know? That's because the plant will have to be unrooted and then be placed under the sun to actually dry out. Ooh. And then they will come, come with a huge stick and basically like, just like hit it so they can get the beans out. So basically like some of that dirt goes with the beans as well. That's why sometimes you find little crumbs. I'm not an agricultural expert. But that's what he but saw. But I'm just saying. <laughs> That is pretty interesting. I never saw the part of agriculture. Thank you so much for sharing that. Now what you want to do is go ahead and rinse the beans and make sure you drain them well. Transfer the beans to a large pot. Add half of a medium white onion, seven peeled garlic cloves, enough water to cook and cover the beans, about 10 to 12 cups. As you can tell, I did not add salt. Now, on a recent short video I did for charro beans, there was a split of opinions because some people believed you should add it at the beginning of the cooking process and some people said you should add it at the end. I've done it both ways and all I can say is do whatever makes you comfortable. I'm going to add it at the end. Place the pot over medium high heat and allow it to boil. Then lower to medium low heat and let them cook on a gentle simmer for about one and a half hours or until soft and tender. When the beans are ready, stir in salt to taste. I'm doing two teaspoons of kosher salt. We will be cooking the beans again, so let's not over salt them. To know if the beans are ready, I simply take one out of the pot, let it cool down and smash it. If it smashes easily, they're ready. And that is the story on how you cook beans. All right, let's do some prep before we start refrying the beans. We're gonna need half of a medium white onion and we need to dice it. Fun fact, yellow onions are best for caramelizing, but we're gonna be using white onion because it's what's commonly used in Mexican cuisine and they do the job just fine. By the way, I did not shed a tear today. So excited about that. We cannot forget the garlic. We're gonna need to mince three garlic cloves. In addition to the onion and the garlic, we're gonna need two serrano peppers. By the way, if you translate the name to English, they are called mountain peppers. They have a really clean and sharp flavor. We are also going to need six chiles de árbol. By the way, these, if you translate their name to English, they would be called tree chili. Isn't that awesome? Now you know. All right, now don't be intimidated by the amount of peppers that we have here because this is not gonna come out too spicy. We're just using them for fragrance and flavor, but I'll explain that later on the recipe. Let's head to the stove, come on. To make things easier, I'm just gonna go ahead and separate the beans from the broth. Set both to the side because we're gonna need them. Go ahead and place a large pan over medium to medium low heat and we're gonna add about three tablespoons of avocado oil or a generous amount. Now what's typically used is lard but it is up to you, this is my preference. I'm actually gonna turn down the heat to medium low. Pretty hot at this point. 
what we're gonna do is blister and fry the serrano peppers. Now the term for this would be chiles toreados, just so you know. By the way, you wanna make sure these are nice and dry when you add them to the hot oil. As mentioned, these peppers are not gonna really add a ton of spiciness to the dish because we're not gonna actually open them, so we're only gonna be getting their fragrance and their smoky flavor. So, but if you still feel unsure about them, you don't wanna add them, you can omit them, it's up to you. Beautiful, and you wanna be able to see a little bit of those brown spots. All right, we're still on medium low heat. Go ahead and add the chiles de árbol. Now, you wanna make this fast, okay? Because you don't want them to burn. It'll make everything really bitter. You just wanna release those beautiful aromas. What you wanna do is stir them constantly. You can hear the crying. <laughs> yes, you'll be able to hear that too. <laughs> These are ready, nice and toasty, and I can smell the beautiful aroma. All right, let's go ahead and add the white onions. We do not want to cook the onions on a high heat because we want them to reach a beautiful golden brown color without burning them. What's happening here is onions are naturally sweet and when you cook them slowly over a period of time, they caramelize beautifully, adding so much flavor to the end result. Just make sure you stir as needed. These smell amazing and they are beautiful and golden brown already. At this point, we're gonna add the minced garlic. Right in there, everything. Are you ready? Well, I guess you can't smell it, but I can. What I'm doing here is stirring constantly because I don't want the garlic to burn. All right, one minute that the garlic has been cooking, we're gonna add all of the beans. By the way, I removed the garlic and the onion as well. So it's just the beans in the pot. Yes, that sizzle. Now we're gonna mash them. I'm using a potato masher and I'm gonna link to it in the notes. Look at how creamy these look. They smash effortless. They're pretty much broken down. At this point, I'm gonna add two cups of the bean broth to loosen them up a bit. All right. Carefully mix everything in. I'm just using the potato masher. By the way, two cups of the bean broth was perfect for me, but if you feel it's too thick, you can add a little bit more until you get to the right consistency. This is looking ready. They are smooth and creamy. By the way, you may get a little bit of chunks in there, but that's fine because we're not blending the beans, we're mashing them, so it's completely normal. All right, at this point, we're gonna add the peppers back into the pot. And we're talking about the serrano and chiles de árbol. Mix them in with the beans. We want the flavors to penetrate. We're gonna let these cook on a gentle simmer for about five minutes because we wanna let the flavor of the peppers infuse into the beans. While they're cooking, you wanna stir as needed, by the way. This is almost ready. We just have to adjust the seasoning by adding salt. This one actually is going to need salt. So I'm adding half a teaspoon of kosher salt. We were almost there. <laughs> Mix everything in and then remove it from the heat. Refried beans are a staple when it comes to Mexican cuisine. Their creamy texture and layers of flavor makes them the perfect side for an entree. You can top them with crumbled queso fresco. While you're at it, fry a couple more serranos and chiles de árbol, the perfect touch of color. 
I am ready to taste. These look amazing. I already made myself a bean taco. Let's do this. Why wait, right? <laughs> Mmm, mmm, my goodness. I love the creaminess, love the texture, love the flavor. The onions are really coming through, I love it. I'm in love, I'm sorry Nelson. <laughs> I'm in love with the beans, they're so good. They're amazing. You know, they have a touch of spicy flavor, but it's not really like a burning spicy. It's subtle, it's so good. Obviously, if you bite into a pepper, you are gonna get a kick of it, but if you just set them aside or even remove them from the pod, you should be fine. In addition, I just wanna say, when you make these at home, enjoy that creamy buttery flavor these are amazing i really hope you try them at home and well just don't forget you can follow me on all of my social media platforms also go ahead and subscribe if you enjoy all of our videos our content don't forget to click the notification bell and also give us a huge thumbs up all right until the next one